Might as well welcome back to the shop. So this is a question from the Workshop Premium. Ooh. <laughs> ask your questions. If you go onto the Workshop Premium thing, ask your questions and you will get priority in those questions being answered. Because I care. Anyway, so a guy called Lazy Dutch says, water, and this is from the Crankshaft video talking about uh, how water cooling can change the entire architecture and design of an engine, basically. What about the extra weight of for the water cooling, radiator lines, fluid, etc. So, it's all about what matters, right? So, let's just say we've got our seesaw of doom, right? We've got to weigh up what is, <laughs> weigh up. So let's just say you've got a water, and let's just say you've got a kilo and a half, right, or two kilos, whatever, let's just, we're just juggling numbers here. Then you've got a rad. Let's just call that 1 kg with all the associated pipe work. Then you've got a water pump. Let's call that an extra kilo. Right. Then you've got a reservoir bottle. Res. Let's call that 1 kilo, just for simplicity. I don't even know why I put the half in there. I should have just put two. But you've got all of this on this side, right? And you've got to say, okay then, the bike, let's just say the bike weighs between 150 and 200 kilos. Right, that's what it weighs. What is this? One, two, three, let's just call it five in total. Let's call this five kg. Right. Five kg for this with 15 kilograms being 10%, this is, I don't know, let's say 4%, all right? When it's the 2 kg one, well, it's half a percent, all right? It, 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 this will change your acceleration, just like the difference between wearing a full set of leathers and some boots and a backpack on. Or just, no, this is the difference between just wearing a backpack and not riding your bike. It doesn't really make that much difference. Versus, versus the, um, what was it, 61 horsepower versus the 74 horsepower. That'll make a lot of difference, right? This, this is a big jump. What is, what is that? Let me just do the sixty-one, and then it's seventy-four. Right, so it's a it's a a twenty percent increase basically. It's almost getting onto a twenty percent increase. That's a lot, right? You know what I mean? That's going to make a big difference where any acceleration changes are minimal. You know what I mean? And it does several things. It doesn't just make, or it doesn't just make the engine, uh, you know, the, the ability to produce more power, but it can also. Um, make everything a bit more stable. It can also change the diameter. You know, we, we saw that this crankshaft was quite big and you had to do all this bullshit stuff to get it to... You can actually make things more compact if you use water cooling. You know, fins and stuff, the massive, all that kind of jazz. It means that just say... Uh, you know, I've never actually tried... I've never actually thought about the effects of fuel injection with an air-cooled system. It probably actually would work better because it can purposely be programmed to monitor the temperature all that kind of jazz and also use fueling to help cool the engine but the difference is is that you get a slight weight penalty in addition to this engine you know and i don't know the difference between because we haven't got a perfect this was a water cool version and that was an air cooled version I'm trying to think maybe a 600 bandit but i think the new 650 bandit was so different like a brand new 
you know, written right brand new from scratch. Maybe a two stroke, you can get cylinders, but then saying that a lot of them make cast iron cylinders that are air cooled, it's not a like for like comparison. Actually, if anybody knows, let me know if you know of an engine that went from water, uh, air cooling to water cooling where the only thing that was changed was the water and everything else is the same, which I, I can't think off the top of my head of what, a good example of that. The next question that someone had, which was just on the regular YouTubes, was why, it was why of all, of all engines, engines, uh, is the temp 90 degrees? So he said basically you'll have a Bugatti Veyron and uh, H2R and a one CG125 and a Renault Clio and all of these other jazz cars, whatever. What did I see the other day? A Suzuki. Is it called a Suzuki Snatch or something? Swift, not Swift, it was a Snatch or some other thing I've never heard of. Um, how come they're all 90 degrees? If, you know, you range from power from just, say, 7 horsepower all the way up to just, say, 1,000 horsepower. How come that the operating temperature is always somewhere around there? That's simple. Let's look at it the other way around, right? Like I say, if you ever want to try and work out anything, um, and stop bugging me with questions. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. Um, if you ever want to work anything out, then you just think about the extremes. So let's just say if we had a little baby engine, whatever that may be, and then some great... Oh, this pen's fucking shag. Piss off. <laughs> or you had some great big truck-sized V20... You know what I mean? Whatever. Right? And this little baby thing had... I don't know what point am I trying to make here. No, nope. scratch that and go the other way around. Let's just say you had one engine. Forget this big whacking great thing. Let's just say you had an engine and its coolant was 150C, but you kept it under pressure. Or let's just say you had a system where it was 40C. Well, how do we arrive at these two figures? How do you get your engine, let's just say you've got some 125 or something, how do you get that one engine to have a coolant temperature of 150 degrees C? How would you make that happen? It's easy. Get your radiator, your core, chop it in, <laughs> chop all this off and get rid of it. Weld up the ends, right? So coolant goes in and out, or use a baby radiator or something else. I don't know, a little 125 ped. Maybe this is a 600cc engine, whatever. Remove the amount of coolant, right? Get rid of it because the, the volume, a lot of it's in your radiator. Get the shortest pipes you can that you can plumb it all together with that could reach. Have the shortest amount of pipe work. I don't know, fill. <laughs> you know, you've got, a, you've got a cylinder like this with water jackets. Just say this is a cross section like that, right? Just so you've got this engine like this where this is the water passages. That's your cylinder. Like that. Oh, you're going to have a spigot at the bottom, sorry. You've got your spigot stuck out the bottom like that. Fill half of this in. So fill all of that in. Fill all that in with JB Weld or whatever you want. Cement, I don't care. So you're reducing the volume in your cylinder. In your head, yeah, you would be looking... Let's just cut your radiator down by, you know, to one third. Third. One third, and let's fill up your water jackets. Let's make the pipes as small as possible, that lengthwise. Let's get it right, you know. That's how you raise the temperature of your coolant, right? By reducing its capacity to cool. Because then what happens is, is that the engine heats it up, it sends it straight to the rad, and the rad pukes it straight back out. It hasn't had enough time, in a sense, to dissipate as much heat as it can before it's returned, before it's pumped back. That's one way of doing it. How would you make your radiator have a temperature of 40 degrees? Well, it's simple. Just double your radiators. Double your radiators, have coolant going that one, 
have it come out uh, have it come out of that one go into that one have that one come out and have that loop back round or even triple triple it have loads of radiators <laughs> have it like a vespa but radiators not mirrors right and then what you do is by the time that you do all your cooling the what you know your coolant might go in and just sit straight from the engine let's just say it's 100 degrees as it first opens the thermostat it comes out here ambient let's just say it's 20 degrees c it's had so much time to get rid of all that coolant we've got three radiators in here let's just put another one in sod it for the fun plumb that in plumb that one in great fantastic comes out ambient once it goes round your engine removes all the heat from the engine it's now going in here at like 60 and then it goes through the cycle again gets rid of all that heat it's not going to drop below atmospheric you'd be lucky if it gets to atmospheric let's just say that atmospheric's like i don't know 17 we're doing pretty well and once it gets into that circulatory job you know you're riding around blah 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 it gets down really low so you can kind of see the answer here this is too little this is too much that's why all engines operate around about 90c because or 80c whatever they all operate around that range because obviously water has its boiling point even though you keep it pressurized all that kind of jazz but still they all operate these things because it's the case of you want to put in as little coolant as you can why because it weighs something you know water is a kilo per litre so for every litre you put in a cooling system that's an extra kilo right there that's literally without doubt that's how much it is so for every kilo you put in the heavier it gets the more radiators you need you know this is overkill if we're doing the vespa radiator thing where we've got thousands and thousands of radiators this is just extra cost we don't need that the reason why we operate this temperature is because Everything likes, you know, you've got the melting temperature of aluminium, you've got the melting temperature of like Babbitt in your bearings and stuff. You don't want to go too high, right? We don't want to go crazy, crazy. We don't want to melt stuff. But we we want, it is a heat engine. It's going to have to get hot somewhere. You know what I mean? Because that's the whole point. The higher temperature gradient we can achieve, um, and just say our atmospheric temperatures here on a graph, the higher gradient we can achieve, the more work we can extract. Right, so that's kind of what we want to do. We want really high temperatures, but let's not get silly and beyond ourselves because we'll start melting stuff and we have to start using exotic materials. If you look at jet engines, that's kind of what they do. They want more and more power, then they've, they've got the budget to start pissing around with more and more exotic materials. Nickel, titanium alloys, all that kind of jazz. So, um, this is a nice temperature where we can use water as a coolant great because it's everywhere it does a really good job it's one of the best coolants there is um but why is it always this kind of temperature too cool means we're using basically we've got our cooling system is over engineered not over engineered it's just too much it's excessive if we get too hot let's just imagine that we can contain pressures up to 200 degrees c it's just it's too little of a system it's not doing it properly and it starts to degrade other things just say like oils seals stuff like that plastics you know a lot of plastics don't like 150 degrees c or plus and there are plastic components that are used in engines a lot of those plastic components granted are used from sexy plastics but there are other things that are made from plastics the seals all this kind of jazz so when you incorporate all of this together it is a sign that an engine has been engineered properly. This is why it pisses me off about all this stuff about Evans coolant and all that rubbish. Is they're like, oh well, it can run to 180. It's like, dude, if you're running a 180, what's happening to your oil? Oil manufacturers will tell you that that's excessive. And I know the Evans boys like, yeah, but if it, if the system goes wrong, it can withstand 180. Oh, cool. So I'm paying... <laughs> cool. I'm paying stupid amounts of money for a lifetime coolant that isn't a lifetime coolant. I've done the tests for that. It doesn't last the life of anything. A lifetime coolant that doesn't cool as well and safeguards me ish from something that the normal system has a built-in safeguard. 
if your engine gets too hot, it will burp steam out of the pressure cap. It'll go, whoa, fuck me, I'm boiling over because the pressure inside is too great and it boils off. That's why it's got that pressure relief cap. That's why that pressure relief cap has a pressure written on it. It's basically a safety valve to stop you blowing the guts out of your engine all over your legs and giving you third degree burns, right? When you're streaming along, puff, it pops the cap. Loads of steam comes out, but it's mixed in with all the air that you're racing around in. So it's not a problem, it's not going to burn you. And they always put it in a place where it's off to one side, so it's not going to come into your face, it's going to blow off to one side. That being said, um, yeah, they, they want you to have this, this, no, no, no. This, if, if your engine is regularly doing this, this means something is broken. Like they say, you know, the Evans bollocks about, oh, well, if you break an, a hose, if you break a hose, your engine's going to melt itself. If you empty all, instead of emptying water, or water and antifreeze, or Evans, you're going to spew that all the floor, your engine will melt itself in a couple of minutes. If it's a water-cooled engine, you run it with no en or water in it, it will seize itself, and it will weld itself together. So, it's not, it, it's not curing anything, and it's not curing anything, and it's not a good, it's not good as good a coolant than water and, and antifreeze. It's just, yeah, like I said, it's just bollocks. Getting back to it, because I can go on about a rant about Evans forever. Getting back to it, it this is just a testament to how um, that coolant system has been designed to suit that engine application. And the fact that they're all the same tells you two things. Those engines are, ad those systems are adequate, and number two is they're set at 90 degrees because of the properties of water. If we use something else, it might be a different temperature. But then, like I say, other things have got to be considered, like oils, all that kind of jazz, plastic seals and all the rest of it. Hope I answered those two questions to someone, everyone's satisfaction, and I'll see you in a bit.